Hello, hello, I'm Breton. Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about another high-yield physiology topic on the MCAT, the menstrual cycle. Let's get into it. The menstrual cycle is a natural process that occurs in the female reproductive system. It is a monthly process that prepares the body for pregnancy and is controlled by the modulation of four key hormones, estrogen, progesterone, LH, and FSH. Estrogen and progesterone are produced by the ovaries, while LH and FSH are produced in the anterior pituitary gland. The menstrual cycle is divided into two phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase. The follicular phase occurs at the beginning of the cycle, specifically the first 14 days, and is characterized by the development of the follicle, which contains the egg. You can see here in the diagram, it's small, getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Whereas the luteal phase occurs after ovulation, and is characterized by the secretion of progesterone in the corpus luteum, which helps to maintain the uterine lining in preparation for pregnancy. As you can see during the luteal phase, on the bottom of this figure here, we see that there is a buildup of endometrial tissue in preparation for a pregnancy. However, if a pregnancy does implant, doesn't implant by day 28 here, you see that all of this lining we have built is going to be gotten rid of through menstruation. Now let's get into the nitty gritties with days. The menstrual cycle begins well on the first day of menstruation, right at zero here, also known as the menstrual period, which is when the uterine lining is being shed. Menstruation typically lasts anywhere from three to seven days, though this can vary, and is characterized by the shedding of the uterine lining, which is called the endometrium. During this time, levels of all four hormones are relatively low. Let's take a look at that. FSH in green here, pretty low. Estrogen, also pretty low. LH in red here, also very low. Progesterone, lowest of all. The MCAT's not going to ask you which one's the lowest, just know that they're all pretty low during menstruation. Next, during days 7 to 14, or in this case 4 to 14, the ovaries release an egg known as an ovum, which travels down the fallopian tubes and into the uterus. This process is known as ovulation. It is triggered by what is known as the LH spike. This is when a rising tide of estrogen, not LH, rising tide of estrogen in a positive feedback loop causes the amount of LH to temporarily go incredibly high and peak. It's this peaking that causes ovulation, not estrogen. I want to make that very clear. This is a very common misunderstanding people have, but it is the increasing LH that causes ovulation, not increasing estrogen. Now, if the egg is not fertilized by sperm, it is expelled from the body during the next menstrual period at day zero. Days 14 through 28 are known as the secretary phase, also known as the luteal phase. During the first half of this period, we see estrogen, LH, and FSH levels all drop while progesterone grows. You can think of progesterone as the hormone that is helping to prepare for the baby. Progesterone prepares. The increase in progesterone is directly due to the previous LH spike. And its main purpose is to maintain and protect the endometrium and any potential fertilized egg. A good way to keep estrogen and progesterone straight is the mnemonic estrogen establishes and progesterone protects the endometrium. After day 28, if there is a pregnancy, then a woman will exit the menstrual cycle while pregnant if not pregnant, the cycle will begin back at day zero with shedding the endometrial lining. And this cycle will repeat every 28 days. This is all of the high yield information that you need to know to answer menstrual type questions on the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on the menstrual cycle, and I'll see you next time.